Hello, welcome back to theCUBE's exclusive coverage of AWS Summit, New York City. This is kind of a big event for Amazon in the sense that it's more part of their summit program, but New York City always is a great stop because this is where all the action is. It's New York City, New York Stock Exchange is here, tons of meetings going on. You got Wall Street, you got business, Amazon. We've got Rob Strecce from theCUBE Research here to break down the announcements in the analysis we're going to analyze and, and observe Amazon. Rob, great to see you. Yeah, great to be here. It was, uh, you know, it's a little warm here, and uh, but you always get good pizza, good bagels, and uh, you know, it's always a great time to come down to the city. Love finding the little pizza places in New York, always a favorite. Yeah. Um, New York always is rocking for the summit. Summit's usually the sales enablement show they go around the world. It's kind of like a mini reinvent, but it activates. There's not a lot of big news at the summits, maybe some point releases, but New York always has some sizable news here. Um, you've been part of the analyst program, you've been observing, you get all the pre-briefings. Um, as the news hits, let's go into it. What's the top story here? What are you seeing? Yeah, I, I think AI, uh, you know, shocking. Uh, AI, once again, is where they're really trying to focus in on how you actually get past that, that chasm of success, get from, you know, trying to evaluate to an actual use case in, uh, in production, and I, I think you're going to hear a lot of that uh, today, throughout the day, and I think people are already hearing that, about how to actually use things like Bedrock, how to get to that, and they have some announcements coming out around Bedrock and how they're going to make it easier, more models, more partners. I think there was some announcements around Q, where they have you know over 40 integrations on the business side, and how that can bring things like Jira in and make it an assistant for the non-technical people on Q for Business, and then you also have Q for Developer, which is really focused on how do you bring that data to, you know, in a secure and kind of, I would say, Switzerland-like way to those IDEs and you know through APIs. And I, I think those those are the the huge ones. And then they have some other stuff around uh, around the edges, around some of the partners and thing, big things with competency centers and things of that nature. Yeah, I mean, I've, I find, I've been on the ground for um, last night and today, and I got to say, one of the things I've got my ear to the ground on is, you know, Amazon as a company has always shied away from this, it's day two. It might be day three, actually, but they're trying to get back to the day one, and that's been their, their philosophy, and I know Andy Jassy um, and Jeff Bezos before him all believe that to be true. This is part of their culture, but Gen AI feels like a day one moment for them. And so with Matt Garman as the new CEO, CUBE alumni, we interviewed him many times, you're starting to see the vibe changing. I can, I can tell you right now, I can see significant changes. One, great partner synergies with the marketplace. Okay, they clean that up. I mean, Amazon's got a lot of cleanup to do, Rob. I mean, their growth over the past decade has created, I won't say carnage, you work there, I don't want to get into your inside baseball, but yeah. I know I've seen it myself. With growth comes carnage and some yeah. collateral stuff hanging around. So, you know, you got to rein that in. Andy, Andy uh, Grove once said, let chaos reign, reign in the chaos. So I think Amazon Web Services is in that mode now. You can see, they won't say that publicly, but it's clear that they've got the massive growth and they're not pivoting, no one pivots in this market. They're continuing to thunder away with rapid growth, even at their size. Generative AI is only going to be an accelerant to that. So they got to, one, clean up some stuff, but also network compute and storage all are going to change radically on how those characteristics are going to behave generated by the applications of generative AI, which creates an infrastructure opportunity, it creates a data opportunity. This is a sweet dream scenario for AWS. I mean, it really is. Yeah, I, I think what's really interesting is that AWS has all the parts pieces to be that Switzerland of AI. Uh, I think they, when you start to look at how they bring it together, I think they, there's some work to do, like you said. And I think Matt can definitely, I believe, is the right person to bring that to bear. Uh, he understands how we got here. Uh, you know, again, he was there when I was there and, you know, when Andy was running things and when you start to look at how all of these different services were brought to, you know, to birth and how they got out and how they go to market, I think there's a lot of work to be done to really make it the easy button for organizations with AI. And I, I think they'll get there. I think they're really pushing in on how they bring those use cases yeah. to bear. 
on that. Yeah, one of the things I say about Amazon is that when they focus on something, they get it right, or they, they fail miserably. <laughs> That's the way it is. I mean, yeah. Bezos is proud of the billion dollar failures. Um, just news hit today on their Amazon, this is just as a data point, reached his goal of 100% clean energy by 2023, seven years ahead of schedule. That's a huge accomplishment. Google's been failing miserably on the carbon footprint challenge uh, on their offsets, and so like, that's a that's a I mean that's an example of Amazon being great, um, and so I won't say they got complacent and took on some moonshot projects, but I mean their um, their company AWS is on the line right now with Gen AI. If they blow this, Rob, this is a would be a huge miss. Yeah. If they if they mess up the Gen AI wave, it, it it's, this could could be a real bad bad outcome for yeah, AWS. And, and I, I totally agree, and I think that. You know, they're very aware. Uh, I think in the discussions that I've had with them, uh, some which I can't go into, but from an NDA perspective, when you start to have an understanding of where they're going, where they're going with agents, and how they're looking into the future of where AI is going, I think that what Amazon is set up really well to do is maybe not chase a market, per se, uh, as they used to do in some cases where, hey, we see this market, we're gonna you know, get there fast. I think where they're really looking out, you know, as they would say, looking around the corner yeah. and trying to be that leader who looks around the corner to see what's yeah. in that other hallway. Yeah, I think you're right, that's a great point. I think if you look at Amazon's history, they made the market. IaaS and PaaS, infrastructure as a service and platform as a service, they built that market from scratch, they made the market. Their, their customers, developers and startups, now enterprises. So if you look at the new market, they got to make that market. They don't need to chase anything. It's there, they're in the market. So the question is, are they, are they too invested in the enterprise? And can they get that new blood in, the new developer, that next brand, the next Airbnb, those next startups, that next um, you know, Netflix, can they get the next company? Yeah. You know, can they, they got to get the new blood in. Yeah, enterprise, totally love the agents. I think they're doing a great job of working backwards from customers on the enterprise side, their bread and butter. But I think a new wave of developers, Rob, I think this is my analysis, is that I don't see them hitting that. I got to see that picture develop. What, what, do you, what, what do you see? Yeah, I, I think again, it's a learning curve for a lot of the new developers who are coming out and maybe they started out in Google and like you said, the sustainability, I'll put that off to the side for a second because Google really missed it said over the last five years, their actual carbon footprint of their data centers has gone up 50%. What what about Microsoft's footprint looks like. Oh, it's, it's, it's probably it's, worse. It's uh, not as bad. I mean, because they're, they're, their capex has been jamming up yes, too. Yes, but so I think when you start to look at the sustainability aspect of it, I think Amazon is in a really good spot for that. I, I you know, I was asked by a company uh, about a month ago and was actually talking to them just this past week, and it's still they're saying who's who is the most sustainable cloud out there. So I think it is something that Amazon should lean into, and I think be very proud of that they got there way early than everybody else. I think there's also how does, that, that's the energy side of things. There's much more to sustainability than just energy and I think they're, they have some work to do there in their messaging. But when you start to look at where Amazon could lead these things down beyond sustainability, I think they could really bring developers in by, again, I was talking to the Q team and they were saying you can do some really big things as a corporation or as an organization with Q for developer. It's built in their free tier to be able to go out and do those kinds of things. And I think to me, that has always been their key is, hey, we get you in with, with that free stuff. I think events like this where they bring a lot in to do these breakout sessions to train people are key and I think that you'll probably see them do and lean into the summits a lot more, not just the big reinvents, which actually are about the same size as the number yeah. of people who come to this. Well, reinvents turned in, I mean, re reinvent has an opportunity this year to really look at themselves and say, are we an industry bellwether show or are we just an Amazon trade show, Amazon yeah. customer conference? They've always been the bellwether, Rob. And now that it feels more like this is just Amazon, talking to Amazon. Yeah. And I think that would be a negative sign, in my opinion. That's a negative view. I think they should continue to make it a learning show for their customers, making the market for Gen AI. Yeah. That's what attracted people to reInvent was. It was the place to go because it's what was happening. 
Right. They were growing with it. It was enabling them to be successful. Not that they were just buyers and customers of Amazon getting schmoozed yeah. in some takeover restaurant that they can't eat at anymore. I, I, I agree. And I think what was really interesting is the vibe, though, of this one was really partner friendly. And I, and I had, you know, yeah. just going around the expo and uh, seeing all of the people there from, you know, Monday.com, which I sit there and scratch my head. I'm like, well, they have no natural enemies here <laughs> as a CRM system. So, yeah, it makes sense for them to be there and their Amazon retail partner. But yeah. then you, you have people like Aviatrix here who are, you know, cloud to edge, being able to make that networking simple. And they had the big announcement with uh, Megaport for being able to do, you know, connections over to 850 different data centers yesterday. You start to look at that. You have Informatica up there. You have uh, Teradata up there. You, all of these people are actually yeah. somewhat competitors to different services. So I think that Amazon is actually going back to their core where they're trying to open up to people who are, maybe they do compete, and, but there, it's co-opetition. And yeah. they compete in one aspect, but don't compete in another. And really bring in a new set of people because I think that they're looking at yeah. you know, these full stack, the, some of the clouds are trying to build full stacks, and they do too, but they don't embrace I think that's a great point. I mean, the Aviatrix example is a good one because that real deal, that it was news that went out that would have got buried, but if you look at it in context of the show, that deal doesn't look like it's big news off on table, but it's actually a really key integration deal that highlights this next gen cloud, next level, that is going to, which is integration. Integration and creating distributed computing environment is what everyone's talking about, but no one's covering it. Right. I mean, we were just at Juniper Networks, now part of HPE, and they're talking about systems, not networking. Right. I mean, it's a system architecture, and this is where integration comes in. So I think the partner program is a secret weapon for AWS right now. I think they got the marketplace reorged with the APN, the Amazon Partner Network. That is, that is a competitive differentiator. That is a resource-based competitive advantage for Amazon. Yeah, and I, and I think they've solved some of the compensation issues. I, I think there's still some to go and f you know figure out within that uh, to make it easier to sell with uh, for those partners. I think it's also got to be easier to you know you can't just use Tackle IO every time you want to go build your marketplace. But you know that's kind of the go-to yeah. vendor out there. You got to look at hey, we have to expand this beyond that to help people make marketplace easier <laughs> to use. And I think that's that's one of the key pinning points yeah. is when I talk to some of the partners, they're like, how do I actualize this? Yeah, yeah. It's great that I'm in yeah. there because I have to be in there to be part of the program and be part of this ecosystem. But at the same I've time. I've talked to Chris Cruz and, and Ruba in the past briefly um, and just had Mona on the cube. And I think, you know, there's a lot of enthusiasm right now, certainly with Gen AI and, and the partners, but the confidence is not there. I'm not seeing a lot of confidence. And what's coming out of the show here is, you're starting to see signs where the confidence in the partner network is realizing through production workloads. And I think that's going to be a big part of this next conversation is that, what is the story? Because if I'm a partner, I care about a couple things. One is, how do I leverage the enablement of the cloud to ride the next wave and make money? So, are you going to help me with my go-to-market? Can, is it easy to use? Do I get good service? Do you make my life easier? And am I making money? At the end of the day, the scoreboard's happy customers and you know money, Yeah, profit. And, and I mean, I think, again, it goes like your comment about you know, Bezos and Jassy. I mean, definitely Jassy had that vision of AWS Marketplace being like Amazon.com and being a whole bunch of sellers in there, not just the Amazon you know, built, you know, Ethernet cables yeah. and USB cables and stuff like that, but competitors and being able to compete on, you know, different values, different cost structures. And I, I think that making that easier to do and to service is is key to yeah. the success of AWS's marketplace into the future because they they haven't always been. And so yeah. you still have a lot of customers being the partners. <laughs> doing private placement, <laughs> and that's how they make their money, is through yeah. private placement. Yeah, and it's, you know, yeah, I remember when Andy Jassy introduced the term builders. We like builders, and it's been around for a while, but he talked about it a lot more on stage a few years ago. Um, right now, it's like a construction metaphor. Right now, all this enterprise retooling going on is about, you know, re-architecting and rebuilding the future enterprise with generative AI and with 
uh, in mind, there's going to be a Cambrian explosion of applications. So if you're a contractor building a house or a bridge or a skyscraper, we're in New York City, you know, they got cranes on the roof. You've got to have a general contractor and then you got suppliers. So I see this marketplace paradigm as a really great way for companies to get in because the big GCs are going to be the integrators. Deloitte, Accenture, Persistent. You know, you're going to start to see those people specking yeah. everything. And yeah. that's where the money's going to be. And I think if you're a startup or you're a growing partner, marketplace partner, that's that's where the action is. Yeah. You're Informatica, all the government's decisions, hey, you're in, Yeah, and I, you're I, specced in. I think that's a big piece of it, and being able to get into all the data centers and being treated like a first party service, even though you're a third party service, mm -hmm. I think is key. And I, I think there's still some work to happen there uh, where people feel that way, because right now it's not necessarily, and there's definitely pushes a lot of times from customers, yeah. hey, I need you to be a first party service, yeah. not a third party service. And that has nothing to do with billing or that's all solved, yeah. right? It has more to do with, hey, I just want to go into console and be able to do there. And I think other other clouds are seeing that as yeah. a Achilles heel from that marketplace perspective. Now, the other side of that is they can go and buy through there. But at the same time, I think you'll see that, especially in the AI space, there are so many sharp corners on AI, and I think it goes back to exactly what you said, which is it has to be a system view. It's different personas than yeah. AWS is used to selling. So like you said, Andy would talk yeah. about the builders. Those builders were infrastructure as a service yeah. builders. Those were the people supporting the coders who were building cloud native applications and microservices. We're, yeah. It's more than that when you're talking about AI. I mean, to me, I think the horizontal scalability of the cloud initially made it a great resource. So they didn't really know the use case. All they did was say, hey, here's some compute, queuing, and storage, go. Yeah. These are the building blocks, as they used to say, early days. Then the higher level services seem to complicate things in that basic concept now, which is, hey, I just want to do some gen AI. I need to get the building blocks. Where are they? It's like, uh, I got to squint through queue. What's queue? That's code assistant. I don't need code assistant. I just want to, I need, I need embeds or, so you're going to see that you really can't narrow this Gen AI down to a product, Rob. You, you got to think horizontal, that's the Amazon strength. What is your reaction to that? What's your, hey, are they doing a good job? Are they set up for that? Or are they kind of getting, you know, product manager focused? They're my product, look at my beautiful thing. Yeah, so I, I think when you look at how Amazon. That's dangerous by the way too. If oh, you're yeah. like too myopic on a product. I, I think they get, uh, I don't think they get myopic on the product side. I think what they get is they they talk to one or one to 150 customers, and when they work backwards, they're working on a very, I, I would say, smaller use case versus the larger use case of an entire corporation. And I think sometimes they, they focus on the builder a little too much, a particular builder and a particular persona within a company. And so that gets a little bit stovepipe within one service. And I think, you know, as, and even this dates back to when I was there, Andy would talk about solutions, not services. And I think if they can get back to that, and I think, you know, Matt had that attitude as well, so yeah. we'll see. Um, there's an opportunity yeah, for that. Matt's, to do Matt's, Matt's got his head put on right. He ran EC2. That thing was that thing was was one of the core bread and butter. Still is. Actually, Graviton Four news is available. Um, I wonder how much percentage of revenue that is uh, given to the compute. Which portion is Graviton? Any insight into the? Yeah, I mean, I mean roughly 48 percent, roughly, is compute revenue. How much is Graviton yeah. taking of that? Well, I mean, any, any I, insight into yeah, that? It, Graviton is a, is a big portion of of the compute. Revenue, uh, I would say it's it's probably greater than fifty percent of it at this mm -hmm. point in time. And when you start to look at how they're really pushing in on that, mm -hmm. it's because they can actually ride the, the price performance scale uh, curve for those customers. So Graviton Three is obviously probably the vast majority of that revenue. Uh, Graviton Two is still probably a good portion of it, and then they're probably trying to shoo everybody off to Graviton and ones and, <laughs> and twos for that yeah, matter. Because yeah, yeah. as they look at it, they have kind of a, a way that they look at the maturity curve, and yeah. you know that fat middle is where they're probably the Graviton Three is still going to be in that fat middle where you have the tails of yeah. laggards and early adopters uh, that are uh, going to move more quickly yeah. to the four. I remember when I first held in my hand the first. Uh, you know, pro processor from the uh, Annapurna uh, merger was in the, at the, one of the re replay parties years ago, and I was like, look at this, don't take any pictures. I'm like, wow, it was small. 
the silicon growth has been great for Amazon. What's your analysis of how that's evolving? Because I, Amazon always has stuff tucked in their back pocket for reInvent. Reinvent's coming up in a few months. It's summer now, and I'm sure they're I mean, they always got a trick up their sleeve. So you, we mentioned sustainability. One of the things I'm seeing right now, trying to connect the dots, and I want to get your riff on this, is that NVIDIA has been going hard, almost like they everyone knows this, like some secret out there, like the GPU thing might crater a little bit. There might be a bigger story around not just GPUs. It might be a bigger story around power and utilization and sustainability. I feel like we might wake up in a world next year where it's like, wow, we over provisioned or overthought all this compute and GPUs and we can't actually have enough power or budget to sustain it. It might be better just to stay in the cloud with Amazon as they start tooling their system. I mean, I'm making this up, I'm just speculating. Yeah, no, I what, think- What's your reaction to that? I think when we talk to organizations and we're, you know, look at the data with our partner ETR and do some polling on our own, we start to understand that people are looking at these different use cases and for the first time in the ETR data in July, it really jumped up uh, budget, jumped up. And it's not, I think budget always jumps up before things like sustainability and others really tie in because people are, are definitely concerned about the sustainability of GPUs and all of this. And I think they will look to, hey, if I'm going to train my model or fine tune it, I want to do it at scale, cost reduced. But then when I want to deploy it, I'm going to deploy it, you know, inference out to the edge because milliseconds or microseconds actually count. All right, Rob, final question. What's your take on New York City, Ada Summit, good? And areas they need to improve? You know, I, I think to your point earlier, I think that uh, some more news about this, so it's not all about reinvent. <laughs> it's always a goodness. Give some of the smaller services a little more airtime. Uh, I think that that would help bring more people in because I think they have such a wealth of, mm -hmm. you know, 300 or so services that they could really push into. So on top news, agents is the big story here. What's the I, I think agents will be the big story coming out of this. I think that with the centers of excellence, with their partners and the partners yeah. and what they're doing. Yeah, I, I agree. I think the Compsity program is a pretty big deal too. I think that's a, that's one of those things you look at, it's like, hmm, wow, you, you unpack, it's like, wow, there's some good action in there. Yeah. Looks like they're starting to get a verified list of people stepping up and kind of flashing their badge and saying, I'm, I'm tall yeah. enough, I'm, I, I can play basketball. Because, I mean, funny enough, AI's tough. I mean, yeah. who, who yeah. thought it would be tough? <laughs> <laughs> Jeff Bezos has a famous line where he says, you know, you can teach someone how to play basketball, but if they're not tall enough, you know, this is AI. So uh, again, you got to be tall enough to ride the, the roller coaster. Okay, it's theCUBE covering AWS Summit. I'm John Furrier, Rob Stucci, breaking down all the analysis, where Amazon is, Amazon Web Services, what they're doing, what they're doing with respect to Gen AI. Check out theCUBE.net. Of course, go to siliconangle.com for news and industry stuff. TheCubeResearch.com, Rob's and all our analysts are there publishing. Check it out, that's where all the, the our research is, and we'll unpack and take what Amazon says. We'll tell you if it's real or not. We'll go, of course, we're bringing it down all the time on theCUBE. I'm John Furrier, thanks for watching.